各位来宾午安，欢迎参加东亚能源转型论坛，台日韩能源转型的挑战与展望。在此，代表台湾大学国家发展研究所、风险社会与政策研究中心，谢谢各位来宾的莅临。Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's conference: Energy Transition in East Asia, Challenges and Perspectives in Taiwan, Japan, and South Korea. On behalf of Graduate Institute of National Development and Risk Society and Policy Research Center of National Taiwan Youth University, we would like to extend our sincere appreciation for your attendance in today's event. 活动正式开始，让我们把时间交给主持人，台湾大学国家发展研究所所长，风险社会与政策研究中心主任周桂田教授。Thank you. Hello, everyone. So, uh, actually, we are very welcome all of our uh, guests uh, yeah, from different uh, yeah, uh, groups, uh, and uh, particularly we actually we today we invited uh, yeah, three distinguished guests from Japan, South Korea, and also our uh, Taiwan. Uh, let me yeah, short introduce everyone. Uh, First, of, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude to Professor Koichi Hezagawa, who actually uh, supports Taiwan very much in the international yeah, forum. Yeah. Uh, Professor uh, Hezagawa actually is engaged in uh, uh, the uh, energy and the ethic, so I think he will give us a very wonderful yeah, talk. And the second, the second one is uh, uh, Professor. Gu uh, Dong Wang, who is actually uh, environmental sociologist and also a uh, former, uh, former member of the uh, uh, Korea Japan government, uh, I think uh, <laughs> he was okay. So I think he will also give a very wonderful yeah, energy policy and environmental policy lecture. And then the third one is the uh, uh, Professor Sam Jun Yong, uh, who is. Uh, Also very famous in Taiwan because yeah, she told me yeah, that just last year or the over last year she also in the same yeah room yeah she gave, gave us a talk about one less uh nuclear power in Seoul yeah uh how to make a nuclear power okay so I think she will also give us a, a, a very yeah, wonderful yeah talk and uh, she is now also the uh consultant consultant of the Korea's government about energy uh, policy. Maybe a member of advisory committee, mm -hmm. and actually I'm uh, chairman of uh, executive committee for one less nuclear power plant. Oh, okay, good. So, yeah. And uh, we <laughs> have the two <laughs> party, and uh, we have the two discussion cousins. That the first one is uh, Professor Lin Zhuren, yeah, who, who is a uh, uh, associate professor in our uh, department of political science, and now. Uh, she is also the official uh, lord. Uh, he is uh, uh, the deputy uh, director of the uh, energy and the carbon uh, reduction office. Okay, in our executive union. So actually, you can ask him a lot of questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the last one is uh, Professor Gao Shuben. Yeah. She is actually the real organizer of the, this forum. Okay, today. <laughs> okay, so I think that we every uh, guest we have the twenty minutes for uh, taking speech, and then I think we have the many uh, colleagues from different uh, groups, uh, particularly from Sudo, yeah, from yeah, Mother Alliance, and the other yeah, colleague from Civil Society group, and uh, we have a Professor Huang Binxi also who. Guide the international uh, uh, MBS uh, program student uh, who join our uh, program. I yeah, express my gratitude. So, the first one will be the professor, yeah, Koichi Hasegawa. Okay, thank you.
Uh, uh, I'm uh, Koichi Hasegawa from Japan. I'm very pleased uh, today uh, to have a chance uh, to talk about energy transition in Japan, especially uh, 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 young uh, generation <laughs> in Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, lots of uh, uh, young students. Uh, uh, today, we have uh, we are sharing very big three questions uh, organized by Professor Chow. Uh, what, what is the enabling condition to break away from nuclear regime to renewable and efficiency regime? Okay? What is the best practice to accelerate the social learning of energy transition? What is the approach to enhance the peer learning of energy transition in East Asia? This is very exciting stimulating good questions. Uh, so, uh, I'd like to learn uh, uh, the answer from uh, South Korea <laughs> and Taiwan. <laughs> and uh, I will uh, show uh, my uh, reply to these questions, okay? Uh, Shortly, I will show my uh, conclusion uh, first. The role of strong political leadership supported by civil society is most critical. For example, uh, Chancellor Merkel uh, in Germany, yeah. uh, I think she is very good uh, evidence. How about uh, President Tsai in Taiwan here, <laughs> and uh, how about uh, new president Moon? I'd like to uh, hear uh, from uh, Taiwanese colleagues and uh, South uh, Korea's colleagues. Okay. Uh, second question: the best practice. Uh, I'd like to uh, answer the local project to promote renewable energy uh, in context of Japan, especially in Fukushima area. Uh, the third question, what is the approach to enhance the peer learning uh, energy transition? Uh, I think the role of information exchange and public discourse it's a public forum is critical. So, uh, like uh, today's uh, forum, and especially keeping open, independent, and transparent is indispensable. Uh, Japan has uh, three options on nuclear energy policy. Okay? Immediately shutting down of the whole nuclear reactors. Uh, I support uh, this uh, immediately shutting down. Okay? Uh, and uh, the second uh, option is reopening the nuclear reactors, which can meet the new standard by the new regulatory agency, admitting but strictly limiting 40-year operation of each reactor, and rejecting uh, constructing new reactors. So, finally aiming at denuclearization by the end of the uh, 2030s or uh, by the beginning of uh, 2030. Uh, recently, a new party, new party of hope, is aiming at uh, this uh, second chance. And uh, uh, 
Communist Party and uh, Constitutional uh, Democratic Party of Japan uh, recommend uh, this uh, first uh, option. And current, uh, current uh, LDP and Kobe cabinet support uh, reopening uh, the nuclear reactors uh, and uh, aiming at keeping to construct uh, new reactors and replace old reactors. Uh, so current uh, LDP have a cabinet supports uh, the third uh, option and want to keep uh, the certain level of uh, electricity around 22% uh, 20, 20, of the electricity, uh, electricity supply at uh, the 2030. Okay. And uh, uh, one of uh, interesting uh, evidence uh, that denuclearization is possible at uh, current uh, Japan. Uh, after Fukushima uh, accident, uh, almost uh, two years, 23 months, the Temporal Nuclear Free Society uh, uh, continued. Uh, because uh, uh, due to the legal requirement uh, to uh, uh, check uh, after uh, operating uh, twin, uh, uh, 13 months, so uh, one by one, uh, all nuclear reactors uh, have been temporarily closing. But uh, uh, in these uh, 23 months, uh, there is no uh, electricity shortage. Uh, and uh, what happened, especially uh, uh, introducing uh, new energy policy? This is most uh, critical point. But Unfortunately, uh, in Japan, uh, very few policy change uh, happen. Uh, the most important is new law to promote renewable energy with, uh, maybe you know, a feed-in tariff system uh, was enacted from July 2012. And a new strict and independent uh, regulatory uh, system of nuclear energy is started from September 2012. Uh, but current LDP and pro nuclear side are giving very strong political pressure to admit uh, the, the opening of nuclear reactor one by one. Uh, so, this is uh, one of my conclusion. Unfortunately, uh, Japan's uh, uh, policy position on energy transition is behind uh, Taiwan and South Korea. As you know, the Fukushima nuclear accident happened in Japan, and the Japanese government is very uh, responsible for the accident. Although uh, policy uh, position uh, is behind uh, in my view. Why? Uh, shortly speaking, conservative government is lack of social learning from the Fukushima accident. And Weakness of civil society organizations, which is lack of effective political partners and strategies. 
the Fukushima accident, like uh, Chernobyl accident, revealed the uh, defeat of uh, Soviet Union's uh, uh, regime. And also, the Fukushima accident revealed the defeat of the post-war Japanese system, the failure and the defeat of the nuclear village, the closed and strongly interlocked uh, relationships between politicians, bureaucrats, the nuclear industry, academy, and the mass media. Uh, especially the regulatory agencies were lack of independence, transparency, and expertise. So, uh, uh, the review of the accident uh, said uh, uh, that regulatory bodies' personnel were masterminded by the operators. And also, uh, uh, independent invest, uh, investigation com commission's report said the safety culture existed in name only, and the notion of safety and security was sold off. Uh, and uh, after the Fukushima accident, uh, to the to the party agreement uh, in 2015 uh, December. Uh, Japanese government uh, set a uh, new uh, target at uh, the year uh, 2030. Uh, the government said we have uh, best energy mix, strong conservation, and renewal, and also nuclear power, UNG. Some uh, uh, LNG fired uh, and uh, coal fired uh, power station. Uh, do you agree? Uh, do you accept uh, this uh, government position? What is the problem? Uh, I'd like to criticize uh, basic assumption. Government said economic growth will be continuing average 1.7% per year. But already Japan entered a uh, depopulated uh, sphere. Uh, uh, 2030, uh, maybe 7% uh, uh, of population will be decreasing. Uh, but, uh, and after economic growth between uh, uh, these five years, only 0.7%. So, this 1.7% economic growth is overestimation. So, uh, uh, 20, more than 20 percent increase, increase of electric de demand. Yeah, here. Uh, this is very uh, overestimation. So, uh, I think. Uh, this power conservation is possible, almost equivalent to nuclear power. So we can uh, uh, support uh, this energy system except <coughs> nuclear energy. This is very good evidence. Uh, and uh, another problem is coal-fired power station. My area, Sendai, this is a strongly 
uh, devastated by a tsunami. But uh, such a tsunami uh, devastated area, utility company uh, is uh, constructing coal fired uh, power station. And uh, uh, as a uh, public uh, sociologist, I'm uh, deeply uh, engaged in this uh, anti uh, coal fired power station. So, Shuhan uh, Kao, uh, she is uh, collaborating with me to connect. Uh, signature in Taiwan. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Xu <laughs> Peng. And uh, finally, uh, we uh, collected uh, 47,000 uh, signatures to petition to the local government. And uh, uh, this uh, September uh, 27th, uh, our group uh, uh, take a legal suit. This is uh, Japan's first legal suit against a uh, coal fired power plant. Uh, yeah, this is me. Uh, yeah, rush of coal fired power plants in Japan. Currently, uh, we have 50 uh, new plants. Uh, plant. Uh, five is already opened and five was already cancelled, but uh, other uh, 45 plants are under construction or in planning. Uh, six minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, this is should be book here. So uh, this government level is too high, and uh, uh, the important point is the peak year of electricity supply is 2007. So recently, uh, it, almost every year. Uh, electricity supply is declining. So it's a very good evidence the coupling of economic growth and electricity consumption is already started, like Germany, also in Japan. This is very critical point. And uh, uh, the year 2015, the level is almost same uh, 1995, 1995, whatever. Uh, so, civil society is at a uh, crossroads. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, in Japan, uh, civil society's uh, organizational background and the financial background is not so strong. Uh, okay, and uh, uh, regional strategy is almost critical in uh, nuclear power. Uh, and after uh, Fukushima uh, accident, in two cases, uh, it is a lower uh, uh, code, parentheses, uh, parentheses one, but uh, high code. Uh, the uh, result was uh, defeated. Uh, and uh, 2011 and 2012, uh, major protest, protest campaigns happened. Uh, but uh, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, this uh, protest uh, affected by a Umbrella uh, revolution in Hong Kong and uh, Sunflower movement in Taiwan. Uh, and uh, uh, nuclear issues 
and the energy issue is one of important platforms of civil society and the uh, fluid industry. Okay. Time is already over. Uh, yeah, but uh, the real problem is here. Okay. Okay. Still five minutes. Could you please finish it? Oh, yeah. Extra five minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's very generous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And uh, uh, next uh, Sunday, uh, yeah, uh, as you know, uh, general election uh, is uh, happened uh, now in Japan. Uh, so, uh, the result uh, will be important, but uh, media uh, prospect uh, current uh, MVP will win. Uh, so the problem is anti-nuclear activism fail to find their effective political opponents. Yeah, uh, after the Fukushima nuclear accident, uh, almost. Uh, Two-thirds of public opinion uh, supports uh, decreasing the number of nuclear reactors. But uh, current MEP uh, uh, cabinet uh, support in uh, keeping uh, nuclear reactors. Uh, and uh, recently, the the ratio of renewable of electricity supply is uh, decreasing. Uh, yeah, like that. And uh, especially uh, after the uh, feeding tariff system was introduced. Uh, I will show one of the evidence of um, the weakness of civil society. Uh, yeah. very small number of members and uh, unfortunately in Japan we don't have a uh, debut in Taiwan and KFEN in South Korea. <laughs> this is one of the most uh, important uh, point in Japan. Uh, but uh, yeah, recently uh, some uh, movement to, to promote uh, wind turbines. Uh, and uh, this is a uh, uh, Fukushima uh, recovery project. Uh, yeah, so many uh, solar uh, sites. So this is my conclusion. Yeah. After the uh, Fukushima uh, accident, uh, civil society, renewables, and nuclear also at crossroads. Uh, some uh, affected by umbrella revolution and uh, some flowers should be in Taiwan. Uh, but uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, Japan's uh, government policy position is behind uh, uh, Taiwan and uh, South Korea. Yeah, uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the Mr. Hezagao. I think uh, in Taiwan we have also a very similar situation by the governmental agencies. Professor which Hezakawa mentioned in Japan, they call the nuclear village, Hernan Chun, including the technocrats, media, scholar, and the nuclear industry, which interconnected together for their interest. So it's uh, actually very uh, similar situation in Taiwan. In Taiwan, we might call the uh, nuclear mafia, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think uh, that is a uh, uh, Professor Kudoma or Samjin will also mention the same structure. And uh, the second point uh, which uh, Professor Hosegawa uh, mentioned about the public support for nuclear 
uh, uh, renewable energy. I think uh, in most country we have uh, also very similar survey result. This uh, means that uh, the public in the region, yeah, it, it, now it is uh, to get their preference that toward uh, renewable energy. This is also very important tendency for developing the green society of green energy. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. So we have the uh, second uh, speakers, uh, Professor Hu Dongwang, who will give us uh, the titles uh, Energy Transition in South Korea, uh, Ecological Democracy Perspective. Please. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very happy to be here with you. And um, today I'd like to talk about energy transition in South Korea. Um, ecological democracy perspective. Um, I will talk about uh, what is the structure of nuclear risk in Korea, and um, I will talk about developmentalism and ecological democracy. And after that, uh, I will talk about the three dimensions of energy transition. Firstly, um, the social movement, and secondly, uh, public sphere, it means kind of mass media or uh, social communication area. And uh, thirdly, I will talk about the political opportunity structure, regime change or policy change. And I will discuss and I will conclude my talk. My research question is, um, firstly, what is the structural challenge of energy transition? And secondly, what are the important social factors of energy transition? Um, this is Chernobyl accident, and this is um, Fukushima disaster, and this is uh, Korean nuclear power plant sites, and um, here the red uh, sign is the. Uh, okay. Um, the Red symbol is the uh, social conflict concerning nuclear um, power plant or nuclear um, disposal uh, facilities. And this is uh, the report of uh, Dong um, There are lots of nuclear plants in East Asia, specifically in East, uh, China. Uh, Korea, Korea is um, uh, surrounded by lots of nuclear power plants. Um, so let me talk about what is the nuclear risk of Korea. Um, the history, we need to think about the uh, history. Firstly, uh, US government tried to develop um, Korean nuclear power plant. And um, oil crisis is, was very important. And in 19, late 1980s, uh, we started to construct nuclear power plant in Korea. And the important uh, characteristic is um, the Capco is kind of public company, and it was funded by the state and government. So very um, not so competitive. It is kind of um, state monopoly system. And um, let me talk about the nuclear mafia. Um, Hasegawa sensei uh, said nuclear village in uh, Japan, but we uh, call it nuclear mafia. Who, who are nuclear mafias? Uh, bureaucrats and uh, companies and construction companies and uh, pro-nuclear politicians and mass media and they uh, decide uh, the risk, the amount and the location of risk. But the victim, who, who are the victims? Um, it is very undistributed, un, uh, equal distribution of risk. It is very important. Um, local residents and future generations and specifically non-human beings. It is a um, very important point. Um, so what uh, makes the structure of nuclear risk? 
I think um, developmentalism is very important. Uh, what is developmentalism? I think developmentalism is the uh, combination of industrialism, capitalism, and nationalism. So I can uh, define developmentalism as the practice and discourses in which Asian states initiate and intervene capitalist market economy with strong industrial policies such as regulation and planning. Uh, in developmentalism, we can divide two kinds of developmentalism. First, uh, authoritarianism, and on the other hand, um, democracy. Uh, I will talk about it later. Um, so if we uh, need to transit from nuclear regime to renewable regime, uh, is democracy enough? Uh, I don't think so. I think um, deliberate democracy can be one answer to solve the problem, but it is not enough. So we think about the ecological democracy. I can define ecological democracy as the political culture and practice in which the rights of social minorities, future generations, and non-human beings can be deliberated, and the rights can be realized in the open and participatory public sphere and policy process. In this point, uh, um, future generation and non-human beings are very important uh, agencies to participate and communicate in public sphere. Uh, let me talk about the uh, governance type. Actually, um, developmentalism, um, Japan, South Korea, and uh, Taiwan, I think uh, they are all developmental state. But um, Taiwan and Korea uh, transferred from authoritarianism to democratic regime uh, around 1987 or uh, nowadays. So we can find developmental authoritarianism and developmental democracy. Uh, in Korea, we first started from development of authoritarianism, and after in around the 1998, we moved to, to uh, development of democracy. Um, and at, in around the 2008, we uh, returned to development of authoritarianism. And after that, uh, Moon Jae-in administration, which way, uh, uh, they will go, I don't know, but I hope uh, they can go to this, uh, this way and U-turn and I hope um, uh, ecological democracy, uh, democratic path, uh, if we can make uh, that kind of path, uh, we can anticipate the uh, energy transition to more sustainable and democratic regime. Um, what is the energy transition? Uh, I think there are three dimensions. Firstly, civil society and public sphere and political opportunity structure. Firstly, what was uh, Korean social movement? Uh, actually, in 19, late 1980s, a uh, local anti-nuclear movement uh, started in Korea. And um, from 1990 to 2014, um, there are lots of anti-nuclear waste disposal facility uh, disputes. And it was very successful. For example, this is Anmyeondo. And this uh, is uh, still Anmyeondo. This is Wuhan. Uh, nuclear, anti-nuclear waste disposal facility uh, movement. Uh, this means with our hands, 
um, let's make non-nuclear uh, world in Wuhan. And it is a, a local referendum for uh, notify the uh, nuclear facility site decision uh, which was made by government. And, but at the 2005, uh, the government changed their policies and they gave, gave uh, more money to the local resident and local government. So they were uh, successful to designate um, the nuclear uh, disposal site facilities. And after that, the uh, anti-nuclear movement uh, was very decreased. So um, the frame was changed. At the first time, the risk frame, it is very risky. But after the 2005, uh, is it profitable or not? The, the frame changed from risk frame to money frame. And uh, after the Myung-bak administration, uh, he uh, implemented the nuclear power enlargement policy in the name of green growth. Green growth, he said that uh, to improve green growth, we need to reduce CO2, so we need to enlarge uh, nuclear power plant. And um, so let me uh, evaluate, uh, 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 let me talk about uh, after Fukushima, what was uh, made in Korea. It was very important uh, disaster to change our uh, energy and environmental regime. Um, local movement restarted and national movement specifically cooperatives and housewives and normal citizens participated in anti-nuclear nuclear movement. It's very similar to Taiwan's case, I think. Um, and the um, Green Party was newly formed and um, some voluntary resident groups were very successful and the uh, energy transition policy of local government. For example, Seoul Metropolitan Government was very successful uh, in implementing one less nuclear power movement. So I think um, there was some change in niches, but it was changed in the regime change was made, and we can anticipate the landscape change uh, in South Korea. This is OE. Uh, please compare the small local resident uh, movement to more citizen uh, participated um, this uh, anti-nuclear um, meetings or demonstrations. Uh, local anti-movement was a little bit successful, but they are not so successful to uh, change the national policies. Uh, but in the 20s, uh, anti-alternative energy movement was proliferated uh, in local areas. I think it is very similar in Taiwan and Japan. Um, in niches, um, kind of uh, energy cooperative was uh, formed in Korea and they changed uh, their attitude. So uh, I think eco-democratic citizens were, were formed. Uh, for example, energy citizenship or ecological citizenship uh, can be found in Korea. Mm, and the other case is a consensus conference on electricity policy. Um, it was uh, implemented by the civil society, small NGOs, 
but uh, around the more than uh, 10 uh, citizens talked about uh, uh, how to deal with the nuclear power plant. So most of the people uh, agreed uh, to stop, uh, stop plant, uh, develop new power plant. It was very important the deliberative process uh, which was made by uh, civil society. Um, so the anti-nuclear movement was successful but could not change the policies. Uh, this is um, I, the table which I analyzed um, the anti-nuclear movement in Korea. Uh, I uh, made six operational questions. So the rights of minorities and rights of future generations and rights of non-human beings and uh, participation of minorities, future generations and uh, non-human be beings. So uh, I found that it is very uh, hard to find eco-democratic cases in uh, nuclear uh, policy regimes in Korea. Um, so uh, let me talk about the second dimension of energy transition, that is public sphere. Um, environmental NGOs try to make an alternative deliberation in civil society uh, for energy transition. Um, and um, local resident uh, talked about the local residents' safety and human health. That was very important issue for them. And um, in 2005 and from 2005 to 2010, the nuclear mafia was dominant in the public sphere. And after 2011, uh, it was changed to uh, pro-renewable and pro-energy transition movement uh, tendencies. Um, so in the uh, mass media is very important. Interestingly, uh, conservative press uh, pro-nuclear position and progressive press uh, anti-nuclear position. It is very consistent uh, in the relatedness. Mm. So let me talk about the political opportunity structure. Uh, like this, uh, closed and partially open and open, closed and open. And the position to environmental movement um, of the government, uh, positive, exclusive, passively, exclusive, passively, inclusive, and positively, inclusive, and Moon Jae-in administration, positively, inclusive, or not? Maybe possible. Yeah. How about Taiwanese case? <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, let me talk about the Koreans political opportunity structure in 2016 to 2017. Uh, many people uh, say that uh, candle light revolution, it was uh, the, our political uh, regime was dramatically changed to uh, authoritarianism to democracy. So, and um, in the uh, presidential uh, campaign period, many, uh, okay, um, so four major political party candidates, except the Liberty Korea Party, agreed to phase out nuclear power plants. They signed. Uh, it is very important progress. Uh, but actually, some uh, party leaders uh,
changes their mind. So it is a very important problem. So uh, let me discuss my talk. Um, what is the structural challenge of energy transition? I think developmentalism, specifically developmental authoritarianism is very important. Uh, specifically, nuclear mafia is the uh, very important polluter of public sphere. Uh, what are the important social factors of energy transition? I think strong anti-nuclear and energy transition movement is very essential. And uh, open and when we have open and deliberate public sphere, uh, the movement can be proliferated. But it is not enough. Uh, political regime change is very important. Um, it can open and um, uh, it can positively include, you know, include uh, social movement uh, and energy transition movement. Um, so eco-democratic tradition in Germany they have strong local and nuclear movement, and they have a strong Green Party and Social Democratic Party. On the basis of that background, they can change their energy regime. Uh, how about uh, East Asia? Uh, is it possible uh, East Asian eco-democratic tradition? Um, I don't know. Partial ditch and regime changes to phasing out nuclear and increasing renewables can be found. But it is very hard to create a landscape of ecological democracy because of export-oriented developmentalism and strong developmental alliances like uh, such as nuclear mafias. Uh, let me conclude my talk. Uh, environmental movements are driving force for eco-democratic transition. When they mobilize public support of public sphere, open and positively inclusive policy regime can change energy regime. Political opportunity structure change is essential for energy transition, but not enough. When strong social movement for energy transition can create green public sphere, and sustainable and just, uh, just energy alternative can be deliberated and accepted by people. Legal and political power can create alternative equal democratic hegemony. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kudoman. So, keep us very uh, wonderful uh, reflection on the energy transition in Korea. So comparing with the uh, Japanese uh, energy transition, I think the, in the region, in Taiwan, in South Korea, or the, in Japan, whether you support or the, yeah, against the nuclear power, the, we have the actually very similar situation. That in the three countries, the energy transition is far, uh, actually is led to initiative. So actually, uh, uh, we ISPRC has a statistic about uh, the minimal energy uh, rate or the percent of the total uh, electricity power uh, nationally. In South Korea, the, the, the renewable energy uh, in 2014 is not over 3%, right? 14, ah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And now maybe it's uh, actually something uh, progress. And uh, in Taiwan, in 2015, 2014 is not over uh, five percent, and that when we exclude hydropower, it's actually only one percent more. And in Japan, uh, 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 from the uh, superficially, the, their uh, mineral energy is arrived twelve uh, percent in 2014, but most of the plan is uh, hydropower. So it's uh, actually uh, we. Uh, Actually, the world is uh, the developed toward world, yeah. As no one said, yeah, yeah, ecological democracy or the green yeah, society. So I think we have to, uh, to actually speed up the energy transition, yeah, yeah, in order to actually balance 
the different uh, yeah, uh, uh, power generation and uh, its uh, uh, side effect. I think it's, it's very important. Okay, thank you. So we have the the, three, the third uh, speaker, is the uh, Professor Samjin Wang, who will give us uh, the title. Uh, uh, topic. The title is "Challenge and the Perspective, Perspective on Energy Transition in South Korea." <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, it's very, I'm very glad to give uh, another presentation here at the same place. <laughs> yeah, it is very honored, honorable chance. Yeah, I think um, my presentation is not much academic compared with uh, Dr. Ku. I think you are very interested in Korea's current situation. So I will deliver the hottest news to you <laughs> because you know in Korea uh, nowadays uh, uh, actually tomorrow we will have a very important uh, announcement. Uh, currently in Korea, uh, Shingori Five and Six. Shingori means Shingori is the name of uh, nuclear power plant. Shingori Five and Six reactors are under controversy because of uh, uh, maybe concerning the completion of the construction. I know in Taiwan, you uh, free, uh, freeze the construction of the uh, power plant, nuclear power plant, even though its completion construction rate is 98% and 92% respectively. But in Korea, the construction rate is uh, we call that is uh, comprehensive construction rate. That is uh, uh, 29 percent, but the real construction rate is 10.7 percent. Anyway, we have uh, those two reactors uh, under construction, and the government uh, actually promised when uh, the president Moon Jae-in, he was a uh, presidential candidate, he promised. Uh, we will not have any more nuclear power plant construction. But those two reactors are under construction. So he printed, uh, we will have a public engagement process to decide whether uh, we complete the construction or not. So that process is ongoing now. And tomorrow, the most important decision will be announced by the Public Engagement Committee. And based on that announcement and the report, our government will decide uh, the, uh, the disease on 24th of this month. So we are very, uh, this week is the most important week. So actually, yesterday and day before yesterday and even today, I've got many, uh, messages and uh, uh, telephone call to ask me uh, to come up on TV debate or some interviews, but because of this event, I couldn't. <laughs> but anyway, so I've got several messages even here. Yeah, so it is very hot now in Korea. So I'm not sure I can give all the information I have here to you or not. So I prepared these contents. Yeah, you can see many uh, photos here. Uh, this is the uh, anti-nuclear or nuclear free society campaign. And these are uh, uh, Gori. And actually, one of the uh, Gori reactors, the oldest one, Gori 1, it was uh, started permanently in this year, June 19th. And on that day, uh, I will show you that one. On that day, uh, President Moon Jae-in announced, uh, he said the shutdown of Korea 1 is the beginning of a nuclear-free energy country, a paradigm shift for a safer Korea, he announced. And uh, uh, this is the pledge of this government, the president, uh, uh, when he was candidate. Phase out of nuclear and uh, coal power plants, actually, uh, all the coal-fired uh, coal power plants first. Uh, we have uh, 10 
coal fired power plants, old one, uh, and he wanna shut down all old the aged coal fired power plants within his town. And so instead of these two uh, dirty and risky power source, he promised increase of new and renewable energy. So in Korea, we have a little different uh, uh, word. Instead of renewable energy, we use new and renewable and renewables. It is a little different from international standard. New means uh, hydrogen and uh, fuel cell and uh, gasified and uh, uh, liquefied coal. And renewable energy includes a little different stuff too. It includes PV, solar heat, uh, ocean energy, uh, biomass, and uh, geothermal, and waste. But that waste includes a little different stuff uh, based on maybe waste heat from industrial complex. So it is based on uh, oil and gas. So it is not renewable actually. So. Our uh, country's state statistics says in 2014, our new and renewable energy or renewable energy account for uh, over 4%, 4.5%, but actually it is 1.06 1, 1. in terms of international standard. So there is a gap. Anyway, uh, President Moon Jae-in promised we will increase the share of new and renewable energy by 20% uh, of electricity generation by 2013. Uh, 30, it is the higher one. Uh, ex government, Park Geun government promised 11% of not electricity, a primary energy by 2035. So it is more ambitious uh, target. And increase of LNG power plant instead of especially coal fired. Uh, uh, power plant because of uh, fine dirt issue in Korea, PM problems. Yeah, how about uh, the current situation of energy consumption and energy policy? I don't know, you have know about the Korea, uh, Korea's energy consumption. So to give some kind of background, I prepared this one. In Korea, uh, the biggest part is uh, petroleum. It is the uh, primary energy. And the second one is coal. And the third one is LNG. And uh, the next one is uh, nuclear. But compared with the OECD country and uh, world average, Korea's uh, nuclear power share is very high. This is 3.1. But at the uh, international level, it is uh, less than 5%. 4.5% of uh, our primary energy in the world. But in Korea, it is uh, over double of the international uh, statistics. And, uh, yeah, let me test this one. And how about the electricity sector? You can see here, the biggest part is uh, thermal energy. And, uh, this is summer, summer is, and among them, coal account for 40%. And the second biggest one is nuclear, around the 30%. So in case of alternative energy, this is renewable, this is just 3.3, and hydro. So if, compound, if we uh, integrate uh, just the four, but it is too small. And, uh, in case of renewable energy, very small part. And how about uh, trend? Uh, you can see here GDP growth, that is blue line, and energy consumption, it uh, also increased, grow. But the growth rate is modified recently, so uh, slowed down compared with the GDP. So it is a good signal, I think. And, but compared with other countries, Korea's electricity consumption is very rapidly increased. So Korea is a very electricity intensive society. So you can see here, you can compare uh, with the average of OECD, that is that line, double. And how about Japan and Germany, France and UK? 
much higher. So we ask Korean people, is it okay to maintain this trend? I don't think maybe we can maintain or the current, currently the growth rate is slowed down. And why Korea's uh, electricity consumption re increased uh, rapidly like that? Because of industry. In case of uh, uh, residential electricity consumption, it is not much compared with OECD. This is uh, just a little half of OECD average. But in case of industrial sector, more than double. So it gives big pressure on our electricity consumption. So it means we should have some change in electricity consumption in industrial sector. Why? Electricity price in industrial sector is cheaper than residential sector. And in case of residential sector, we have uh, maybe progressive price system. So we pay different rate for different uh, stages. But in case of industrial sector, it is much lower price than uh, residential sector and there is no progressive price system. But we are facing some challenge. Uh, as uh, Hasegawa sensei already mentioned, we have a climate change issue and the South Korea announced uh, greenhouse gas reduction target uh, in 2009 and 2000, 2015. So in case of 2009, the government announced a reduction target by 2020. And in 2015, we uh, announced a reduction target for 2030. And the reduction target is based on BAU approach. So BAU means business as usual. They forecast some uh, emission, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, and from that, we will reduce some uh, percentage. That was 37% uh, BAU uh, compared with BAU. And But you know, if, if we change this one or calculate this one based on certain year, it, it is 22% uh, uh, reduction from uh, 2012 and uh, uh, you can see a 4.3% reduction from 2005. But anyway, it is not easy, but uh, it is not much ambitious. So uh, climate tracker uh, evaluated Korea's approach is not much ambitious. But anyway, this is our target. And, but you know, Korea uh, stand Korea uh, ranks uh, number seven in the world in terms of CO2 emissions from uh, fuel combustion. Such a small country ranks uh, number seven in the world. But even though our economy, in terms of economy, we rank uh, number 11 in the world, but in terms of population, we rank uh, 26 uh, uh, in the world. So you can see here, uh, our Share of population is just 0.7% of global population, but our emission account for 1.8% of global total. So it means uh, compared with the population size, our emission amount is, or uh, share is much bigger, 2.5 times of our population size. And the problem is, uh, as Dr. Gu mentioned, the uh, Lee Myung-bak government and the Park Geun-hye government uh, thought nuclear power is uh, appropriate uh, responding strategy to make uh, such reduction achieved. So they want to uh, expand uh, nuclear power's share. I want to go back. I cannot go back. Oh, uh, what happened? Huh. <laughs> Yes, but you know, our nuclear power is too big. Can, you can see, in terms of in installation capacity, Korea ranks number six in the world, and others all number within number six. But 
The most important and critical stuff is this one. In terms of nuclear density, it means uh, land size divided by installation capacity. Korea ranks the number one in the world. So even though we have 24 reactors under operation, but our country is very, very small. So it is very densely pop, uh, located. So it gives a much bigger risk to this country. You can see this uh, figure. Uh, U.S. has the biggest number of reactors in the world. Currently, they operate 99 reactors. But Russia, uh, France, 58. China, 38. Russia, 35. Those numbers are much higher than Korea. But you can see the size of land. Very, very small. So, but we have 24 reactors in such a small country. And you know, again, the most important or the uh, uh, critical uh, problem again is within this small country, small number of sites has uh, many reactors together. So in, in the world, we have 186 sites uh, in which nuclear power plants are located. But there, just 11 sites have uh, nuclear reactors over six. But in case of Korea, so just 6% of uh, total uh, uh, nuclear sites have over six reactors. But in Korea, every site has over six reactors. So you can see here, Hanbin, six reactors, and uh, Warsaw, six reactors, and the two reactors are under construction. And here, uh, uh, I don't know, the not Warsaw, Warsaw, six. And this is different one. And in case of Gori, can you count how many? How many? Yeah, 10. Can you imagine 10 reactors together just in one site? And you know, here in Hanul too, if we construct all reactors planned, it will become 10 reactors again. So, you know, this is the uh, Singori 5 and 6. Those are under controversy. So do we need to complete the construction or not? That is the issue. So you can see here, in case of uh, uh, Gori, that is number one, nine. And if we have another one, that is Gori one. It is already shut down, but still it includes the spent fuel inside. So we can account them together. So 10 reactors in one site. And you know, the next one is Bruce. That is located, that is in Canada. So number eight reactors. But the population size besides are different. Here, just uh, uh, 30,000 population. But how about the Kori? 3.8 million people. There is no such uh, site in this world. And not, such, not just the population size. We have a very important economic facilities around there within 30 kilometers. So if we have some accident in those uh, nuclear sites, our uh, economy will be paralyzed. So it is a big burden on our economy itself. And again, our government and the pro-nuclear uh, people always argue, oh, we don't need to worry about the earthquake. earthquake. Korea is an earthquake-free country. No, that was a lie, liar. Because you know, our old documents already approved our country uh, experienced the earthquake, but not within 100 years. But Currently, recently, we are experiencing earthquake. So last year, magnitude 5.8, it was the strongest one we have experienced. So many people are not uh, forecast that we will have a stronger one, stronger one in the future. But 
We did not have uh, evaluation in terms of earthquake, uh, the impact of earthquake on our nuclear power plant, especially Chingori 5 and 6. How about uh, spent fuel disposal? We do not have any plan, uh, any site uh, prepared. So maybe in this year, we, we had some public engagement process two years ago, but the result was uh, nothing. So this year, this government will resume or restart the public engagement process to, make, to solve this problem. But anyway, we do not have any solution yet. But the government, or the, uh, until ex-government and the pro-nuclear people want to construct and construct and construct without any plan for site of... <laughs> this is the hard one. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> let me have what, five more minutes. The same. <laughs> so, you know, you can see the, uh, some movement, uh, resistance, uh, resistance from uh, both sides. Uh, Anti-nuclear camp, they uh, strongly resist against the construction of uh, Singori 5 and 6. It is not just uh, uh, two reactors addition, very different situation. It will make uh, 10 reactors in one site. So its magnitude is different. And how about these people? This labor union of Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power Corporation, they are in charge of construction and uh, operation of nuclear power. So the labor union resist against the government plan to not to construct those uh, reactors. And the local people also resist. But local people, they are divided. Some people are uh, against the construction of nuclear reactors in Gori 5 and 6, but some local residents uh, push. We should construct because they uh, expect some income from that construction event. And the government established a public engagement process. And you can visit this site, but unfortunately it is written in Korean. <laughs> but anyway, that is, there is a committee and there are subcommittee, research, communication, deliberation, and law. And it is composed of uh, nine members, including one chairman. And it has a communication council, expert group, and committee to verify activities, something. So it uh, started July 24th. And it, uh, it made some citizen drilling. Uh, after the first uh, opinion survey, and uh, it is composed of 500 people. And uh, that citizen jury had a deliberation process. The orientation was happened, happened on uh, September 16th. And one month, they have some uh, time to study and learn because both two camps, pro-nuclear and uh, construction support and the construction staff, they provided the, their information and the citizen jury uh, studied that information and there is some e-learning process and some uh, this kind of paper document and many documents were given to them and they uh, studied at home and they had a workshop uh, last week. So. October 13, 14, 15. So two days, uh, two nights and three days. And they had some uh, expert presentation and discussion and deliberation among themselves. And finally, they had a uh, public opinion report after the deliberation process. And tomorrow, uh, the result will be reported. That is the process. So this is the... Uh, uh, see, uh, the scene, and maybe I was here. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, you know, this uh, public committee, uh, no, citizen jury, uh, does not include the future generation, even the or the uh, young people in Korea over 19 years old. They are regarded adult. So this is just to include adult. So. Public Engagement Committee prepared uh, 
future generation debate. And I was invited as an expert to give a presentation to young people. They are composed of high school students, uh, 106 uh, high school students. And at that time, the students uh, voted stopping, stopping. And, uh, but that result was not uh, correctly delivered to citizen jury. So I criticized a lot. But anyway, so how about the movement in Korea? Uh, we have some growth of energy autonomy and auto energy transition movement in local areas. So there are many. Uh, uh, Hasegawa uh, sensei already mentioned uh, political leadership is very important. In Korea, some political leaders from uh, current ruling party uh, in ex-government uh, oppositional party, they initiated the local energy transition movement. And here, this is the most important uh, case, Hagon Sun. Uh, one less nuclear power plant and Gyeonggi province and Jeju province and uh, Chungcheong province. Uh, these four leaders uh, made some kind of uh, MOU to work together. And even though their uh, parties are different, these two, Gyeonggi and Jeju, belong to opposition party and uh, he ruling party and the Chungnam ruling party. But anyway, uh, so uh, currently people's willingness to pay for renewable energy are increasing. That is good. So I just say this one. Uh, there are many challenges, but there are many opportunities too. Uh, recently, the central government has big political will to have energy transition. That is very, very important. And we, are, we have many more local leaders to work together with the central government and the citizens. I think the citizen participation is the most important thing. It is not just a centralized large scale energy system. The alternative energy system is decentralized, small scale, and citizens participatory energy system. So citizen participation and political will is most important. So you can see here, but uh, there are momentum of conventional energy system. So it is very challenging. But uh, this is the implication of public engagement on the construction of Shingori 5 and 6. Just so you can read. I think, uh, I don't know tomorrow what kind of uh, outcome we will have. I hope uh, many people, more people vote for stopping uh, construction of Shingori 5 and 6. But nobody knows. And I think even though more voter will give, will, uh, is given to uh, maybe resuming the construction, I think we need to accept the result. So it is just the, the first uh, st uh, step toward the energy transition based on citizen participation. I think a citizen deliberation process itself was very worthy. It was wonderful. And the people who participated in that process, they uh, satisfied and they found their uh, maybe their existence meaning or uh, their self value. It was very good. So citizens were very excited. Wow, we can decide our country's energy policy and uh, the, some kind of destination of our energy movement. So that was a good lesson we learned from this process. Thank you so much. Very enthusiastic, uh, yeah, talk. Uh, actually, it's, uh, it's uh, very good. In the three countries, the political opportunities that, uh, are open. Uh, actually, it's, uh, uh, even in Japan, Koji uh, 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 mentioned that in Japan that uh, uh, they had the relative weak civil society, but after Sui Wama Kusima accident, actually, the political opportunity for ten the uh, power generations uh, is actually opened. And uh, in South Korea we can see actually the civil society of the reflect uh, energy uh, generation is uh, changed. Because two years ago I remember when I uh, went to South Korea I just heard that uh, you had a big uh, moment 
about uh, uh, anti uh, uh transmitted yeah, power at the moment. And uh, yeah, today what I heard is about the uh, anti new anti nuclear movement. I think it's a good uh, development uh, in terms of the direction. As we said that uh, our center has the least attitude for energy transition. Uh, we have the attitude that the energy transition in, uh, embark uh, three components. The first one is the uh, uh, energy fuel selection, and the second one is the industrial transition, and the, the third one is air pollution. We we see actually that in our three countries we have, have the same yeah, component. We have the selection towards nuclear power or renewable energy and so on, or coal-fired power, which also related to the third component, air pollution. The air pollution in the three countries actually is very serious. And then, as Koichi shows or the Samjun shows, uh, in the three countries we have the energy-intensive industry, so which also might be yeah, turned yeah, in the new era. So what's important, uh, even we have uh, already opened the uh, critical opportunity, but what's important is uh, the one mentioned, we have to institutionalize this opportunity, how to institutionalize the uh, energy transition in our policy, in our institution. So now, the Professor uh, Lin Suen, I think uh, he will present uh, yeah, the way uh, about the institutionalized uh, of energy transition in Taiwan. Absolutely, you have 15 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Actually, I think I yield my time to Sun <laughs> Jin and uh, uh, I, I will make it very brief, and then probably when you leave some more time, we can have more discussion. I would, because I, I was invited, uh, I'm very pleased to be here and uh, join with the, the panel with my old friends. I more than I think I know, know them more than a decade, and so I, I think we know much uh, uh, know each other about all this idea and uh, so share lots of uh, insight and comments. So I, I, for the global, I prepare some, some background for the global trends. I think there are some trigger for, for this wave of energy transition. Many people talk about energy transition gradually, but actually there are many tri triggers, I think. So I just tr probably try to combine or make a comparison for, for the three, three countries and in, in the later uh, my presentation. The first, I think the Paris Agreement will be a very important trigger, but it's not, it's, it's not the trigger alone, it's also a, I think it's, it's also an end result. So probably for a two decades for debate and the struggling for the many people trying to, to put down a concrete a political commitment globally. So we have a two degree C and also trying to accelerate the, all the transition to, to reach one, uh, 1.5 degree C, try to the uh, carbon reduction. And there are several other I will just skip. And also, I think another important for the carbon reduction because usually we will just only talk about the carbon reduction, but actually, uh, there's a very important element is about energy. Everything we talk about carbon reduction because energy consumption accounts about seventy percent of our uh, emission carbon emissions. So, so it start two thousand and eight, the EU, the energy and climate package, actually to combine these two big field and two together. And the 2015, the Climate uh, uh, Paris Agreement, I think they also endorsed that uh, because we need to you, uh, put much our effort and also focus on the energy transition, that will be the key for the carbon re uh, reduction. So we'll see this is from uh, 2015, all the political leaders and also enterprise, they stand together trying uh, to put a lot of big, the, the big money for the mission innovation. So we see the technology, also uh, industry sector, they, they jump in. So I believe the, the transition will be much quicker and faster than the last two decades. So the global energy transition actually began in early 1970s. At that time, we talked about energy efficiency. But now we talk about energy transition, not, not only from the, the centralized to decentralized. We talk about the, the fossil fuel driven. Recently, we heard about lots of news that uh, many all European countries try to stop the, their fossil fuel uh, power plant, also fossil fuel cars. Also, you will see lots of uh, uh, decoration recently. 
So I, I believe the transition was much quicker than we expected. And also we just transferred to our, tra transit from this centralized system to the decentralized system. And this will be the energy for everyone. And I just want to highlight because without, I don't have much time. But there are two major strategies for this energy transition. Many people talk about renewable energy. The other part is very important is about energy efficiency. And so you'll see from the Germany, UK, and also France, the, the, all the, peop the many people mentioned all this, they, are, they have many innovative ways for energy transition. I just, so this uh, just skip here. And also this one I would like to highlight, in, in addition to the national government, or we, the traditional say the nation state, they also the urban local government. They also play a very important role. This is a Pakong Su, right? So actually, the, the very famous uh, plan started actually 20, 2012, I think it's 2012, the first label, right, 2012, for one less nuclear power plant. When I first met the park in, 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 in Rio, in Rio oh. at that time, the Rio Plus 20, he announced that, uh, that, that plan. So I think it's, it's, now it's ended to the phase two, right? So local transition is also play a very important, not just the national, local government, a city and subnational authority, they will play a very important key. So that's important, I want to mention, for this global trends. And also I would like to highlight, because uh, Obama, the, the, he wrote an article early this year in the Science Magazine. <laughs> so this is a well-respected magazine, because he, he said this because I think he, this, this article, there's some intention, probably try to respond to Obama, uh, the, the Trump at that time, he, he tried to withdraw from the Paris Agreement. He said that the trend toward clean energy is re irreversible because now the science and economy have already provided the help of a guide for what the future may bring. I think that the message is very clear. Now, I, I just briefly about any transition to introduce to the, uh, to the friends and also colleagues here. Maybe some of you may already familiar with the, 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 the energy policy for, for the government, the new government. Now, actually, in start to 2015, in Taiwan, we have several milestones. In 2015, uh, we passed the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Management Act. Even though we are not very satisfied about the act, we have many opinions about, or a different idea about this. But actually, we, can, we have to admit that actually it's a milestone. And also, 2016, the President Tsai was elected as President uh, took office in, in May, he announced, she announced this energy transition policy to try to have a nuclear-free homeland by 2025, the nuclear phase out by 2025, and also try to uh, increase the share of renewable energy in, in electricity. And also, there's also a very big move in 2017, early this year. We have an amendment of Electricity Act. I, I, I think this is also is very important. This the, I think it's the first phase of electricity market reform for Taiwan because we will open the market for renewable, also introduction, introduce the, the user purchasing option for, 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 for green power. And this is the target because by 2025, we try to have an electricity share about 50% come from natural gas and 20% from renewables and the coal about 30%. The currently, the renewable probably just roughly 5%, less than 5%. And natural gas is 30, and uh, coal is around 40 something, around 40. So it's a big challenge, it's a big challenge. So, and also the nuclear phase out. I think basically this is the, the energy plan. So this is the energy mix uh, for, for the new government. They are targeted to, 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 to be, uh, try to be accomplished by 2025. And this is some core value uh, behind this energy transition. Yeah, and emphasize energy security. This will be the top energy security. And also the green economy, environmental sustainability, and social equity. So also there are some, some uh, strategy and also some major will be included in the, into this energy transition. Now I would like to just reflect and combine, because last night I, I read all the slides uh, uh, the, the presentation gave us. So I, I start to think about what we uh, or we can have try to collaborate all uh, in, in this region. Well, I think we share a lot of it in common. When I uh, read the Koichi this slide, because, because I think the nuclear, Fukushima nuclear is not just 
affair in Japan, I think affair in Asia and also the world. And also, it also is, uh, I think, very uh, turning point for the all the energy policy, especially for Taiwan. And so I think it's very important, even though it's still a challenge right now. I know it's still not not, not finished yet. And also, you mentioned that there's a conservative ruling party, Abe administration, is still still ongoing, <laughs> right? So, so I, it's still I think it's a long, right? Compared to the post-war, some other region is still there. So this uh, also play a key. I'll come back to this later. And also, I like I think about the anti-nuclear movement because I think the uh, professor Hakasa which he mentioned in in very his slides in very fruitfully about this nuclear movement. So I think it looks like this anti-nuclear movement in Japan, not just the anti-nuclear movement uh, in our traditional mind, it combines some peace movement, the anti-war or anti-nuclear weapon. So it's, it's very complicated in some way. And, and the, probably because, because I think there's a very special political situation in Japan. And also because I think Japan has, a, I think you have a strong nuclear industry. So I think that is very difficult. So you mentioned that probably Japan is not good as Japan in Taiwan, and the, in your slide you mentioned they're not good. And but I think you have a very special situation there because the industry still play a very big bigger role. For the Korea, I think uh, the, the the professor Gu mentioned that uh, the mafia, <laughs> nuclear mafia, is very interesting. And but you, you highlight a very important this uh, political economy of nuclear power. Because it's not a very, it's not just an environmental issue. It's not a local opposition. It's a combination of industrialism, developmentalism, and also nationalism. So I think it's very important. Uh, this argument here, and but we, we see some some hopes in Korea because also I think that the Park uh, Su, this one less nuclear power plant is very powerful. I think also it's not affecting in Seoul, now in many cities in the world especially in, in many cities in Taiwan. So this campaign, I think it's, it showed that the local initiative for energy transition is not just possible and very, it's, necessary. it's necessary. We need the local action. We need the urban or city to join this global effort on energy transition. So we also see some uh, alternative energy movement have already uh, or have already, um, it's happened already in, in Korea, but you say it's small, uh, but not. Uh, uh, but I think it's it's also give, give some some insight to to other country or in this region. And also, I noticed that you mentioned in your slide, also Sunjin's slide, that uh, recently for Citizen Jury Consensus Conference, some deliberative democracy, uh, this kind of forum has been already performed in, in many or en energy related. I think it's quite good. I'm sorry, it's probably 14, right? It's 20, 2004 or 14. But actually, I think it's very important. I think it's uh, you have already to, to bring the citizen into the discussion. This, I think, that's I would like to highlight for for some. To some point, right? So right, right, right. right. This is not official. But very oh, it's small a very small one. Right. I, I I got it from your slides. Some of your slides. For Taiwan, I I am thinking what, how to put it into comparison. <laughs> I would say the political opportunity structure is important. It mentioned it also. Other booths, uh, US, and also many of you have mentioned this in all, all three. Because the time we elected President Tony Sim, and, and that's provide a very important political opportunity for this new energy transition strategy to put forward. But also, we have to say that in the, over the past few years, we have already have a, the long, a strong environmental anti nuclear movement. We mainstream already the anti nuclear movement. Many celebrity and many uh, so so called the, the middle class people have already job, they stand up to for the anti nuclear. So that's I think this also from civil society have already stepped up in the political uh, movement and also the political structure they, they come later. And also we have also have to face that we also have a very big challenge for the energy intensive industrial sector still dominates. So in the past few, uh, I, I think a few days ago, there's a, the EIA review. You still see that uh, uh, the Formosa Plastics, they have a steel, the, uh, the steel mill, a very big steel mill uh, plant is under review. So this still, uh, this is a challenge we, we need to face. 
And also in the past, I think the decade, we have a strong or growing strong is the anti-air pollution campaign. So they also become a, another trigger for the energy transition locally, not just outside from the other country. And up, another challenge I would like to see, but because the first few is basically is from the structure, just like the term you use. But I, I would like to, for the policy level, I think it's very important for Taiwan is we have very low energy price. In terms of electricity or oil, we, we are probably the, one of the cheapest oil uh, the energy price, Korean too, <laughs> right? So, so this, it makes the, all the energy efficiency or energy saving activity very challenging. Because uh, this is, uh, but I guess, or I think probably similar to, to, to Japan, uh, similar to Korea, because they, the government intentionally to put the energy price lower to increase their industrial capacities. So that probably there's some other not political reason, also have a industrial economic reason. But there's also a good sign because the new government, they have already started that the energy transition white paper. They try to engage more public into uh, the, the energy process. They, they try to introduce a co-work. So people and, and experts, they can work together to formulate there's a new energy policy. So the, they had already started. So now probably they will, in the late, probably earlier next year, they will come up with some, some new energy plan. So this is a, uh, probably is an innovative way for Taiwan. Finally, I, I, I just highlight a few, probably we can work together, or not just a policy or, or research, or probably for the movement. I think the energy transition in East Asia still largely depends on political opportunity structure. We'll see probably the, the presidential election in Korea, in Taiwan, the partnership in central government, they very, I think, play a critical role for the, the energy transition. So, and secondly, the deliberative forum, all this deliberative democracy, uh, this consensus conference, juries, citizen jury, only engage a small portion of civil society. We, we call this probably just micro public. But we need a probably larger democratic transition. They, they own, so right now, we, we still not challenge the core value of development. Reason. So we need to institutionalize. I just echo some of you this slide for the eco democratic region. I think that's it's very important. It's a key. And also, I think in, probably in Korea, Japan maybe. Too. And we still, the industrial structural transformation is also a, a very, should be put in the proper agenda because all these are energy and carbon intensive industry. And finally, I also would like to, answer, uh, to emphasize energy prices are low. This is, this we still see choosing energy prices are low. So we have to, to face this is one of the, the key challenges. Uh, there's no free lunch, actually. <laughs> We have to face uh, this very important issue. Finally, I want to echo many of you have mentioned that community power. I think this is a citizen engagement. This, this time, I think this wave of energy transition is, is, is totally different from the early phase of it. Because in the early phase of the energy transition, this still is a centralized system. But this time, we emphasize renewable. Renewable is basically small scale, decentralized, just as Sunju mentioned. So it makes people more easily to, 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 to accept, also to participate. So I think we all share some common. We need to broaden our social base, or uh, our public support, and probably the community power is the citizen power. Right? For now, we, probably we can collaborate on many energy cooperative movements, also transition time movement. So they should be from the bottom up not just by a uh, top down. Okay, here's my, my reflection. Thanks so much. Also the overviews of the energy transition in Taiwan. Actually, it's, uh, our energy bureau now engaged in, the, in constructing the uh, white paper of energy transition, uh, and in which the, it's, uh, the energy bureau also brings some uh, public participation. Okay, then we have the, the last uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Yeah, we, I think we have to... Yeah, five. Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay.
Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, sorry, I don't I don't prepare my PPT, but uh, I will just briefly reflect on uh, what I heard from today's uh, various presentations. Uh, first of all, I think um, it's very important for us, you know, like uh, East Asian uh, different countries from East Asia, this area, uh, to collaborate together to to make a nuclear free uh, region. And uh, from my observations in the previous year, uh, in terms of anti-nuclear power movement, uh, in, especially in Taiwan, uh, after Fukushima disasters, uh, civil society has a really strong dynamic and bring the anti-nuclear movement to a climax. And um, my observation is, during that process, actually a uh, civil group uh, from Japan and from Korea uh, has been working already with the uh, Taiwanese uh, environmental protection uh, movement groups. So in that sense, I think um, we see uh, that, that information changes and also uh, uh, in terms of uh, how uh, the civil society here in Taiwan uh, were impacted by the Fukushima incident. Um, so now for us, for Taiwan, I think the challenge is um, now we, we uh, stop the nuclear power fall. That's a consist as a success of the anti-nuclear movement. But in terms of energy transition, uh, I, I do see some challenges here, and I don't repeat uh, uh, what uh, Professor Lin already mentioned. Um, I think for all our discussion, uh, the first one is uh, social learning. Social learning uh, from uh, uh, Professor Hasegawa, you, you talked about social learning uh, in terms of political leadership. Uh, I think that is what we need here uh, as well. And uh, when we see President Moon from South Korea, you know, uh, make this pledge of a nuclear free societies, uh, to me, I, I think that, that is actually a, a quite uh, good intention and ambitious. And I think that, that might bring some uh, impact or, you know, or some, um, I guess in terms of, uh, we, we learn from each other, you know, from my point of view. So for Taiwan to stop the first, uh, the, the fourth nuclear power plant, uh, plant I, I do see that might be bringing some impact to, I'm not sure about South Korea, but uh, in terms of, uh, uh, we got, uh, we have that impact, uh, nuclear disasters impact from Fukushima, and that mobilized Taiwanese civil society to that high awareness. I think in the past, Three decades, we already have anti-nuclear power movement. But in terms of the civil society, so my argument is, before 2014, um, well, actually, I think, uh, two, between 2011 to 2014, I would call that uh, stage as the anti-nuclear movement. And from 2014 up to now, now we are entering into a new uh, uh, energy transition. Uh, movement. You know, if I if I divided uh, what happened during uh, after the Fukushima disaster, I do see two stage. And now uh, I I don't think Taiwan right now. Even we face uh, the the challenges of uh, some part of the civil society uh, or from the uh, pro nuclear uh, regime or populations, they still wish to uh, reinitiate it. Uh, they, you know some uh, reactors and or even or even um, you know um, to extend it uh, the uh, nuclear reactors but but from my point of view I don't see the civil societies uh, will go from that direction so the, the I think the key is how now we we move and uh, to increase the um, energy efficiency and also the you know the various type of uh, uh, renewable energy development so um, in terms of a community level, uh, the People's Power Plant, uh, several key environmental groups, and many of many of uh, this group uh, representative are in this room, already been working to make uh, People Power's movement uh, this kind of project uh, start in Taiwan. But what we face, I think, is the the a lot of like a policy uh, constraints and. Uh, the amendment of the Electricity Act in uh, earlier this year, um, I think that's uh, maybe a good uh, start. 
However, I also see uh, it received uh, you know some criticism from uh, you know part of the civil group uh, uh, for the group who wish you know to have a more uh, progress and. Um, so during this uh, amendment of uh, electricity act, uh, we also observe that there are uh, strong resistance from uh, the stakeholder. Uh, well, here mainly, you know, the, the, the Thai power, the Thai power of the company, the labor um, labor uh, unions. So um, we do see that kind of a, a counter energy transition movement, that kind of, a, 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 of social forces. So, um, in terms of uh, 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 the level, in the central levels, uh, as uh, Professor Joe, uh, Joe mentioned, we do have a we do initiate uh, energy transition white paper uh, this year, and also uh, through that process, uh, try to expand it uh, more public uh, engagement. Uh, I think that is something. Uh, we look forward you know, with, through that process to have a more different level of a, a di different um, representative of social groups that will participate in this uh, in terms of public uh, public engagement in the energy transition on the central and the more regulation level. Um, but I think in the community level, uh, which I work more, uh, what I observe is uh, a lot of a community uh, citizens. Uh, they want to have a, well, I guess when, I, when we mentioned about energy transition, maybe for a lot of the local residents, they are, it feels it's a novel concept for them. Um, I think over this past few years, uh, I think it's seated in here, uh, they already uh, have that attitude or perception say, no, we don't have a, uh, we don't want to have a nuclear power. That is, uh, I think, for sure. However, when it comes to how we, Transit uh, because right now we, we uh, renewable renewable energy the uh, generation rate come from renewable energy is about like only five including hydro. So how can we achieve you know another uh, fifty percent more up to uh, two thousand twenty? Uh, um, right now I think there are two elements uh, need to happen. One is energy saving, which I think uh, in several local government already been working and uh, like I know uh, uh, Sanjun also come and to talk about that uh, one last uh, nuclear power movement uh, in Seoul which also bring a lot of uh, social learning uh, uh, with uh, to uh, Taiwanese uh, environmental groups and also some citizens who participate in that kind of a uh, uh, forum. However, I think in the local level, in the local level we do need to expand more more of a, in terms of a, uh, a practical project, practical project in the local level to bring in, um, I think the increase of uh, information concerning about uh, energy saving, concerning about how to uh, increase uh, uh, the green um, energy, uh, which is in the form of a people's power, um, in that kind of a form. So um, I think the, the um, local environmental groups here over this past two, I think from 2014 up to now, this past three years, there are several uh, social groups, they start a social enterprises um, in terms of a building um, a people's power plant. Um, there are several projects like, uh, you know, people are familiar with uh, uh, one person, one kilowatt, or uh, uh, Sunny Thunder, or it was uh, uh, called uh, Green Old Dot, uh, which is uh, Professor Lin's. He, he also part of with and uh, uh, the house, the House Baker United Foundations. They also have a kind of a co-op. So we have a various type of uh, this kind of project, uh, which is taking place. Uh, you know, this past three years, in order to bring in more uh, increases of uh, uh, green or renewable energy uh, through. Uh, public participation and these projects are mainly uh, I think are more focused on solar solar and uh, PV um, so I think uh, this is one thing in the local level we, we need to have a more information sharing and to bring in um, just regular regular citizens to know about this and another one is in terms of a risk communication 
uh, we, we, I do observe that there are several communities now they uh, also have some resistance or protest for uh, those offshore uh, uh, wind uh, offshore uh, wind power uh, line and uh, uh, those communities they uh, need to have the converters uh, facilities uh, those communities uh, residents they they protest and because they are concerned about the EMF risk or uh, other type of a risk or or some uh, communities in the center uh, in the middle of Taiwan uh, where they plan to have uh, uh, a more uh, it's also kind of a green green electricity development uh, area and the uh, residences it, uh, in the surrounding areas uh, those communities residents they also uh, express their concern uh, uh, regarding such kind of a green uh, energy development project so I think it, in terms of a, a lot of a risk communication and also upstream upstream communication need to take a place um, when I think when we are talking about uh, uh, increased uh, green uh, energies and different kind of developing project very it's very very important to have the upstream uh, communication and the public engagement with the local community uh, residents uh, not like a wait until people heard about that kind of project you know this is kind of from a more micro and, and local level I think that's something uh, public engagement is very very important and um, um, and I think the the, the various uh, last one uh, in terms of ecological citizenship um, I, what, what, from my observation I think uh, there's something uh, good to see it happen here However, um, I, I, I wonder, uh, we do have this type of uh, 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 ecological citizenship. I would say uh, with a small group, different um, um, social movement group or environmental groups, we do see this type of uh, you know, uh, phenomena. However, does that extend it to the overall general population? That is something uh, I think it needs to take. Uh, it 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 may maybe happen when when we have a more local engagement, you know, and more information uh, 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 to fill the gap of different type of uh, um, um, energy or information, and that might be happen in that sense. Um, okay, so I think I think that I um, yeah I think uh, that will be all uh, for my part. So maybe five minutes. <laughs> okay, so uh, she can give us our final reflection. That actually, uh, the particularly, I will also uh, uh, raise the particular issue that she can uh, propose the, the social uh, learning. I think we have the not only social learning, but societal learning, and the societal learning within three countries, three society. We actually uh, learned by each other. We know that uh, the new South Korea president Moon Jae-in actually uh, uh, tried to uh, want to learn the uh, and, uh, nuclear free homeland policy of Taiwan and uh, so they actually very concerned uh, that our partial breakout on uh, um, August 15 yeah, due to some accident uh, result in our uh, power uh, transmitted uh, yeah, Network shut down. Okay, then I think it is all, all, uh, the same way. And uh, we, in the three countries, we also have the energy intensive industry. We also have the heavy air pollution, yeah, due to the yeah, uh, uh, power generation by coal fire power or by thermal power. So we have to actually very, uh, we have the very systemic vulnerability in the three countries, not only. Yeah, in the uh, power generation sector, but also in industrial sector, also in air uh, government sector. So I think that that is quite important that we get together. Yeah, yeah here, yeah, today. So uh, due to the time, we already yeah, are looking behind for 20 minutes. So we will have 10 minutes for uh, take break. And, okay. and 10 minutes. And uh, please come back at uh, uh, 
for 15 and then we will have the about 15 minutes for discussion. Okay. Thank you.